Welcome to the seventh chapter of the React Relay tutorial on how to GraphQL. In this chapter, you'll implement the voting feature and you'll learn how you can update the relay store after a mutation was performed. Like with the previous chapters, you'll start by preparing the React components to create some UI elements and account for the new functionality that you're going to implement. So this is what the new render method of the link component looks like. At first, we want to render the index, so the current position of the link, and we'll pass down as a prop from the parent component from the link list. Then um, we're also retrieving the user ID from local storage, so that depending on whether the user is currently logged in, we can go ahead and render the upvote button. If a user is not logged in, they'll actually not see the button in the first place. And then in addition to the description and the URL of the link that we rendered before, we're now also going to render the number of votes of each link and the name of the person who posted the link, as well as a string that indicates when that link was created. And for that, we're using this time difference for date function that we're going to implement next. So this function will simply be a utility function that we're putting into its own file. In the sources directory, we create a new JavaScript file that's called utils. And in there, we're pasting the time difference and the time difference for date function that we'll use to uh, compute a more uh, user-friendly and readable string based on the date that we get from the server and that's stored in the create add field on the link. All right, so for this to work, we also have to import the uh, user ID key as well as the time difference for date function in the link component. So that's what we're doing here. And then we also have to go and make a small change in the link list component where we have to pass down the index um, from the iteration down into the link component so that the, lin so that the link knows at which position it's being rendered. So notice that the app won't work at the moment because we are accessing information inside the app that we're not yet requesting from the server. And that's the votes uh, on the link that we want to display. So we actually have to go and include that information in the fragment that we're specif specifying right here in the link component. So here is what we have to add to the payload of the link component to make this new setup work. We are now also including the person who posted the, the, um, the link, as well as the number of votes and the created add field to get information about when this particular link was created. So before we can go and run the app though, because we made a change to the GraphQL code in our pro uh, project, we have to go and run the relay compiler again. So let's go ahead and execute the relay compiler, pass in the sources directory, as well as the schema. So now um, the uh, query got updated, and now we can actually go ahead and test our application to see if the new information is also displayed uh, in the app. So there is actually an error that occurred due to a minor typo that we made in the link list component. So since we are calling this the node here or we're using the destructuring operator, we actually have to pass down the node as the link prop. So now it should work and the information should be properly rendered. In fact, we have to do that twice. So here we go. And now we see exactly the information that we expect. So we see the number of votes per link. We see when, it when a link was created. And we also see the person who created a specific link. All right, so now the UI is prepared for the new voting feature and we can go ahead and implement the corresponding mutation. And the way how we do this is by, go uh, by creating a new file in the mutations directory that we call create vote mutation and where we put the following code. 
So on top, we first again import a couple of dependencies and then specify the mutation. Um, this time, the mutation input takes the user ID and the link ID so that we can create a vote that is associated with a user and a particular link. Then we're taking this, uh, preparing the input object as we did before. And then down here, we are calling the commit mutation together with the environment, the mutation and variables. So this should all look pretty familiar to you. But then we also have this optimistic updater and this updater function that we can implement. And these two functions you can use to tell Relay how you want it to update the cache after the mutation was performed. And in fact, the optimistic updater will be executed already directly after the request was sent to the server, but the response was not yet received. So this allows you to update your UI optimistically with the state that you expect. And then once the actual server response is received, the updater is going to be called and all the changes that you made in the optimistic updater are rolled back for the changes that you implement in the updater to be applied. And this you can then do with the actual data that was returned by the server. So let's see what the implementation for these two actually looks like. We first implement the optimistic updater and we put the following code inside of it. So notice that this proxy store object that is being passed into the function basically is your interface to the relay store where it caches all the data from previous queries. So what you want to achieve in this optimistic updater function is that you want to make sure that the link that is being voted on actually receives its, its upvote. So you optimistically assume that the mutation is going to succeed and thus you can already go ahead and increase the count, the vote count of that link by one. And the way how you do this is by first retrieving the link from the store using the get method and passing the link ID. Then um, you're essentially following the structure of the link object from your queries payload. So the link has a linked record and that's called votes and votes has a value that's called count. So Basically, the way how this works is that all the objects or all the related objects of an object you can retrieve with the get linked record function. But as soon as you have a scalar value, a scalar value, you can use the get value function on the record. So here, what we are effectively doing is we are retrieving the um, linked votes record from the link object and then the count value to um, know the number of counts that this link currently has. Then we're taking this number and incrementing it by one. And then just um, the other way around, we are writing the new value into the store. And this already makes sure that the, um, that Relay knows, or we just increased the, the number of votes for that particular link. And this is now going to be rendered on the screen as long as the server response is not there yet. So let's go ahead and implement the updater right away. The implementation looks like this, where at first we are retrieving the root field of the mutation that we just performed from the store. And this create vote name here, the name of the field refers to the root field of the mutation that we just sent. And now we are just walking our way um, through the mutation payload, through the vote, through the link, through the votes to retrieve the number of counts that was returned by the server. And this should already be the new number of votes for that particular link so that we have this new information that we retrieve. And this is precisely what's happening here. So we are getting the vote, then the link, and then the votes all as linked records. And then finally, we are retrieving the count um, of um, the votes field with the get value method as we did before. And since this is already the new vote count that already accounts for the new vote, so it is already incremented by one, all we have to do now is to retrieve the link from the store and then set the value with the new vote count. 
And notice that the last line of both updater functions is identical. And that's a common pattern where you'll find that um, it's sometimes even worth um, to implement a shared updater function that's just going to be called instead of having two times the identical code here. Here, it's not that big of an issue because that's only one line, but you might be in a situation where you've got multiple lines in the end of an updater function that are shared. So then you can implement that in a dedicated function to, to um, prevent uh, duplicated code. So now that we're done with implementing the create vote mutation, we can actually use this implementation in our link component where we've got the vote for link method that's going to be called when the voting button is clicked. So the way how we implement it is by first retrieving the user ID from local storage again, and then the link ID from uh, the, the props link. And then once we have the user ID and the link ID available, we actually first have to determine whether a user is allowed, um, is currently allowed to vote on that link because every user in our app should only be allowed to submit at most one vote for a particular link. So that's what we're going to implement in this user can vote on link function that we're going to implement in just a bit. So if the user is allowed to vote on that link, then we're just calling the mutation that we just implemented. And otherwise we are printing this information in the, in the console to indicate that the user already voted for that link. So how can we implement this user can vote on link function right here? Here is what it looks like. So what we're effectively doing, we're sending a one-off query to the server in which we are filtering and looking for a vote that fulfills the two criteria that it has to be submitted by the user with this particular user ID and the, for the link with this particular link ID. So if this query returns more than, um, more than zero items, so one or more items, we know that the user already has submitted a vote for this particular link, and we are going to return false from this function. If this is not the case, then we're going to return uh, true so that um, here we can actually decide um, whether the user can now um, send the mutation or if we ju should just print the error message. On top of the file and run the relay compiler again because we added the create vote mutation which contained more GraphQL code. So again, let's go ahead and run the relay compiler. The create vote mutation is going to be compiled. And now if we run the application, we're able to vote on the links that are being rendered. Once the site has loaded, we can actually go ahead and submit our votes and we can click more often on the links where we already voted and we'll see that these votes are not actually submitted anymore. This is it for the seventh chapter of the React Relay tutorial on how to GraphQL. In the next chapter, you'll add real-time functionality to the app and learn how you can use GraphQL subscriptions in Relay Modern.